Hi everyone, welcome to Mini Project 2. So Mini Project 2 is going to guide you through setting up a layout in Photoshop and then after you're done with that, that'll actually be part 1, after you're done with that part 2 will be taking that Photoshop mock-up and turning it into HTML and CSS. So what we have in front of us is actually uh, the layout that we're going to be building or at least most, um, most of what we're going to be building today. So let's get started. Um, the first thing you want to do after you open up Photoshop, let me drag this over here so I can use it as a reference and get out of the way, is to create a new canvas. So go to File, New, and from there set the width to 1400 pixels, the height to 1400 pixels, and then make sure your color mode is set to RGB color. If you don't set it to RGB color, uh, a number of bad things could happen, like your layers might not be uh, settable, so you want to make sure you have RGB color and once the settings look correct just hit OK and it should create a new canvas and mine actually popped up off screen but here it is uh, so throughout the tutorial I'm just gonna uh, well I'm just gonna basically work on the layout and uh, you guys should probably just pause the screen whenever you need to to look at the settings that I'm setting I'll, I'll try and be clear about um, whatever you know settings I'm using but if you need to, just pause the video, rewind it, and hopefully that should be enough to, uh, to continue on with the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to replicate this gradient background that we have in the, in the layout. So let's go ahead and do that on this screen. Um, we've created the new canvas already, and we're just going to create a new layer. So uh, go down here and click New Layer and layer 1 should pop up and from here what we can do is we can actually just fill the layer with uh, black okay and then to actually get the gradient we're actually going to go into blending options and set the gradient uh, through here so just open up blending options click gradient overlay and then all these settings look good make sure your settings match and then go into gradient and actually set the color here so the first color we want to use is 5AABF9. The second color, and I'm adding a, a third color here just in the middle by clicking on the bar. And I'm going to put it, uh, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it at a location of 24%, and I'm going to give it a color of A1. CCF3 and this last color over here I'm going to give a color of D D D A F5 and you just hit OK and uh, one thing you'll notice actually is our gradient is actually going the opposite way so there's a really easy way to fix that all we have to do is hit reverse and once your settings look like mine just hit OK and you should be done so one thing to notice is um, the way I'm actually doing the gradient here and the way I'm going to be do, doing colors for the other components of this layout is I'm actually just filling it with a solid color like black and then adding all my color information, all my styling information via blending options. And the reason why I'm doing that is um, just in case, and this is kind of atypical because I already have the colors written down, but, but typically when you're doing a layout, uh, your colors change quite a bit. and it's very easy to just go into blending options and and change the colors and move them around instead of having to pull up the paint bucket again and you know set the color you want fill it and then fill it again so blending options is really a nice way to just kind of experiment with colors um, so yeah try and try and do all your coloring uh, or styling through that okay so let's move on uh, after we have that gradient done, let's go ahead and create this red bar down here. So again, what we're going to do is just create a new layer by clicking the new layer button here. And then we will just draw that uh, bottom rectangle with the rectangular marquee tool. Just like that, and that should be big enough. And then again, fill it with black. And you'll notice that whatever we selected is still there. Um, to deselect something that's already been selected, selected, you can go to Select, 
deselect and it's Apple D for those of you on a Mac and now let's just go ahead and apply the, uh, the burgundy color we have there so instead of going to gradient overlay this time we'll go to color overlay and we'll set the color to nine five one two three four and hit OK alright and similarly let's go ahead and create this yellow bar over here so another new layer and just draw another box fill it with black again blending options color overlay and we're gonna give this one a color of 5 E B E 10 okay and we're gonna deselect so we can I go go to select deselect or hit Apple D and then let's go ahead and actually just check the height of this so that it's going to be consistent with our uh, our target goal here so to change the the uh, or to check the dimension the dimensions of this bar we can go to edit transform scale and once this pops up over here in the top bar we can actually see the pixel height of it so if yours is set to percent right now you can change it to uh, pixel height by just right clicking the box here and setting pixel so right now it's 70 pixels let's actually set it to 50 pixels so let's just go ahead and just type in 50 pixels and hit OK alright so that looks pretty good we're moving right along uh, the next thing we want to do now is create this white box here that's actually housing all our content okay so back in our project here and you can hide the uh, the extra details about your blending options by just going here and then uh, yeah let's go ahead and create a new layer and this time instead of using a, a normal rectangle to draw this let's actually use a rounded rectangle and that's because if you look closely this is actually slightly rounded at the top, at the top. So we're going to just create a rounded rectangle ourselves by going to uh, this tool right here, rounded rectangle. And for the radius, let's actually set it to a value of 6 pixels. I think that's a pretty good approximation of what we have here. All right. So just drag and let go. And make sure, actually, that you have the same settings check checked as me. So this uh, box over here should be clicked instead of this box I think which is default um, and if you click this box it's just going to draw a simple shape if you do this uh, this box it's going to give you kind of a a weird masked layer and that's that's not what you want so just make sure you have this selected and in this case this box should actually be white and right now we have it in black so an easy way to invert the color the opposite color of black is white is to hit uh, Apple I, or I believe, and I'm not positive, let's see, uh, you should be able to do it through the menu system too. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I remember exactly how to do it from here because I use the uh, the keyboard shortcuts all the time. But let me see if I can find it really quickly. Um, should be Apple I. Oh, okay, right here. So, image, adjustments, invert. And that'll invert the colors just like that. And uh, before we do anything else to this, let's make sure that we have the right dimensions. So, we'd like this to have a width of about 1,000 pixels. So, right now it's at 942. Um, let's go ahead and try and get close to the 1,000 pixels. So, you might be tempted right now to just type in 1,000 pixels here. But if you do that, what's going to happen is these rounded corners in the top are actually going to get stretched. And uh, that's not exactly what we want. We want to maintain the ratio or the, the curvature on those, on those corners. So exit out of this and actually just use your select tool. Select, you know, a portion of this. And we're just going to basically, you know, expand this manually until we have something close to 1,000 pixels. So I've selected part of the rectangle and holding shift 
and using the arrow keys, I can just move this portion of the box. Okay, so I moved it a little bit. Let's double check what width we have now. It's 972 right now, so it looks like we can drag it out a little bit further. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, what are we at? A thousand and two pixels. Let's see if we can get just a little bit closer. Two, check. Oh, almost. Let's just correct that. Okay, a thousand pixels. So generally, when you're using the arrow keys to move objects around, shift and the arrow key will move it by something like 10 pixels. And if you don't hold shift, it'll move it by a smaller amount, and it'll move it typically by one pixel. I think as you zoom out, those values change a little bit. But uh, normally it's about 10 pixels each time you move it with the shift key held down, and uh, just one pixel if you don't hold down the shift key. Okay, so now looking at this box, we have a thousand pixels, but we're missing this sliver of the box. So what we can do to fix that is just select the portion of the box that's going to be wider than this gap, go back to the Move tool, but instead of uh, just holding Shift this time, we're going to hit Option first, and then hit uh, the left arrow key. And sorry, I'm not quite sure what that key is on Windows, so just experiment experiment with that, but on the Mac it's Option. It might be Alt on the uh, on the Windows systems, but if you hit Alt and you hit the arrow key, instead of moving the selection that you've uh, selected in the direction of your arrow key, you'll actually duplicate that. So as I move this, you'll see that uh, we're not actually moving that selection, but we're moving kind of a copy of what, of what we selected. So you just move that copy over the gap that you have there, and then deselect. So select, deselect, and that should fill in the gap for you. Okay, so if we actually zoom out on our layout here, we'll notice that uh, in this final example, <clears throat> this bottom corner isn't actually rounded. So it's very easy to fix that here. Uh, all we have to do is just select the very bottom rounded corner portion of the box and hit delete. And then deselect. And there we go, we have the basic shape. So let's now go ahead and just go into blending options and add a little bit of the styling that we see here. So layer 4, blending options. We'll go to outer glow. We'll set the blend mode to normal. And we'll set the opacity to 10%. And uh, the color here we'll set to black because we're going to try and mimic a shadow. And we want to set the size here to 8. And there we go. Now our content box uh, has a very subtle shadow to it. It makes it look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more 3D. And uh, let's just go ahead and add a couple more details. So we added the yellow bar in the background. Let's go ahead and create this yellow bar in the foreground also. The easy way to do that is to just take layer 3 actually and duplicate it and you can duplicate the layer by selecting it and dragging it down to the new layer button. It'll make layer 3 copy, drag it on top of layer 5 which should be your content box and then what we're going to do is we're just going to mask uh, the contents of layer 3 into layer 5. So hold down alt, I believe, or option on the Mac, I believe it's alt on the PC and uh, this little icon should show up when you hover between layer 3 and layer 5. Uh, click down and what will happen is uh, layer, three, layer 3 will mask into layer 5. Oops, why do I have a layer 5 here? That's not right. Sorry, I jumped the gun. So let's actually delete layer 5 and layer 3 should uh, mask into layer 4 which is our content layer. So you'll know you've done this correctly if you see this arrow here. And once it's masked, what we're going to do is we're just going to shift layer 3 down. So we kind of have this effect here where uh, the ribbon in the foreground is just slightly lower than the ribbon in the background. So just drag down. And you'll see, because it's uh, masked, that <clears throat> the portion of the...